I don't know usually where to start, if the big picture or the small picture and then go beyond. I don't know, what do you prefer? I usually start by the big picture because the big picture is easily for me. And uh, because of the universe is fractal. So whatever we take in this conversation, it would be the same, the big picture or the small picture, it doesn't matter. But also the problem is that the universe doesn't have a core. So that's the main problem why it's difficult to explain the universe because you don't know where to start. So one of the main things to understand the universe and the reality uh, is to understand the perspectives of the universe, which we call the dimensions. Uh, you all know what dimension means, or a little idea. In which one we are, for example, do you have an idea? At least what we are observing, right? The third. The third, we are on the third, yeah. We are here in this third dimension. But um, we are moving on the fourth dimension. Our, our goals in our life are in the fifth dimension, but the way we move in our lives is the second dimension. Uh, and we have no idea about the sixth dimension for sure. <laughs> That's why we are trapped in this kind of reality. So um, to understand where we are, we have to first understand that we are in the third dimension. But there's uh, some mistake in which um, we usually, the spiritual people, uh, fall usually, that we believe that we are in the third dimension, and if we go to the fourth dimension, we go high, and then the fifth dimension go higher, and like that. And we have to remember that the universe is not like this. It's not layers. Actually, all the dimensions exist right now here at the same moment. Dimensions means the different perspectives of just one reality. And to understand all these dimensions, we have to understand what is that only reality. Which dimension do you think it is? If we are all coming from one point, what's the first dimension? Zero point. The zero point. The zero point, now we are going to see it. And then we have three points more where we go back to the center. One, seven, and nine. So um, what we call the zero point, the main point of everything, is the emptiness, the vacuum which is the um, acknowledge of the self, is the, um, is the being uh, in complete meditation. It's just one consciousness in complete meditation. So it's just one being just thinking in nothing. That's why he knows everything or it knows everything. But we used to explain in these dimensions, we used to explain the story like this. Um, the, the main consciousness, it was the nothing, the emptiness, and then uh, he knew a lot of things about himself, but he had no idea he, what could it be, what could he be in the future. So we have um, one reality, which is, I know who I am, but who could I be? So the zero point is just um, an answer and a question in the same sentence, which is like, I, uh, I am, <laughs> something like that. So the librarians used to say that that consciousness is like, someone living on a big library with many, many books, and he read all the books, everything. He knows everything read in the books. But he never there to go outside the library to see if that things that he was reading about were real or not. So the zero point is the moment in which that being is sitting with all this knowledge here and just empty, in thinking nothing. And the start moment, the one dimension, is when he realized, or it or she, whatever, realized that must open the eyes and see if it is true. So according to this, the whole process of the universe, everything that we know, everything that we will know, is just about knowing ourselves. And to find all the paths that could show us the possibilities of who I am. We imagine that we are in the zero point, emptiness, the vacuum, where everything is. Nothing exists, not even time, not even space, nothing. Just the consciousness of the self. And then I realized that to find myself, I must open my eyes. So what it was sure for me, which is I am, now starts as a question, who I am. So there is number one coming up. It's the first dimension. The first dimension is that dimension in which after that meditation, we open our eyes and see everything around us. And it's where we can see all the books of the reality projecting outside from within. So at this moment, we realize that we have to move because when we see everything, suddenly um, it's like uh, a very desperate situation because there's so much that we don't know where to go, what to do. So there's when the second dimension comes. When I focus my complete vision in just one point, so I go out for myself to look for a part of myself. We call that the positive because it's the movement I do to go farther, to look for some point. And I decide where to start, which book I decide to start. In other words, we used to call the positive the purpose. Yeah, the purpose. So all of us has the same purpose. We all share the same purpose. 
but then it starts to divide. So, but what happens in the universe when you have a positive? It's inevitable, we have the negative. Why is that? Because when I move from the very center forward, it means that I'm leaving something behind. Yeah? It's a strength, a force that will pull me to the center again. So when I look and I focus on the purpose, there is something behind me that we call mission. So this is the two perspectives of the universe. Second dimension, purpose and mission. We also used to call this time and this space. What it means that the purpose is where we move and we flow around the universe. And the space is the only place where we can experience this. You can't focus on one point if you don't have two eyes. So that's why we need two parts of our being to focus on one point. I'm not speaking about good and bad. I'm speaking just positive and negative. So this is the second dimension. And then what we are going to see here is that at the moment we move to the positive, there is something that is pulling us to go back to the center. That is the magnetism, also called the gravity. So gravity and magnetism try to pull us to go back to the core, to the center of ourselves. This is an eternal movement, once and again, once and again, trying to look for the core, for the center. We used to call this electron, uh, proton, neutron, neutron, electron, the trinity. I know that we used to call the trinity the mother, no, the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. You yeah. know that. Christianity have this way of seeing the the trinity and the science has this way of seeing the trinity gotcha. what we call the holy spirit is the spirit the father is the soul for example oh. and the son is the body so the trinity too but this is something really human or cultural yeah. biologically we have the mother the father and the son yeah but in the main core of the universe we have these three which is time space and gravity for sure we all most people here are uh, spiritual people yeah. so we used to call this the light the dark dharma karma and to this, we call love. Yeah? Gravity is the love. But this is so um, uh, a human way of seeing it, that love is not the love that two humans have each other. Love is something more simple and complicated. So love creates the sun between positive and negative. The sun is the one that is allowed to see both in just one spot. If you are the negative in order to see the positive, and if you are the positive in order to see the negative, you need a third point of view. So that's why we create the third dimension. What is the third dimension? Is the point, the reality, where we experience the duality. Living in a world like this is bringing on practice everything that we have ever dreamed or thought. So here, the positive and the negative are exactly the same because we are looking at them at the same point. So this is why when you try to reach the light, the worse in life you are. Did it happen to you that uh, when you are a light worker or looking to the light or angels, whatever, suddenly the worst things used to happen? And as closer you get to the light, more dark around you. This is easily to explain. As closer as you get to the light, there is more dark because you are in the center of the room. And here the light is not the center of the room. So light is not the goal of the universe. Light is the focus where we have seen our purpose. So that means it's outside. So imagine that there is a light or a lantern or how do you call it, a lamp yeah, on a corner. And you, see, and you see the light because it's the only thing you have in the room and you say, I want to go there because I will feel more Please and comfortable. Okay. So I go there. But as closer I get to this focus, what happened to the rest of the room? The shadow, the shadow is bigger. Yeah, it's easy to see. Yeah, so as close I get to the light, the shadow around me is bigger. The shadow is just trying to remember me that this is not where I belong. That I belong to the self, which is in the center, in the middle, where I can see every point from the same point of view, same distance. So the only way you can go through the third dimension is not going by light, it's by unifying both of them and go through them, what we call the fourth dimension. One, two, three, four. We call this the four st stages of the universe. Every being in the universe, even a flea, even a cell, a planet, a galaxy, us, has the same four stages. We call the first one the expression. Then we have experimentation. Then we have integration and then transcendence. So when we focus on something, we are beings creating a new reality. And to create, we have to express ourselves outside. When the universe did this for the first time, create the time, it did like, like a breath, deep breath. And the wave start to go all over the reality. We call this like this. The breathing of the universe. The first is the time, then is the core, the center, holding the reality and expressing. 
the space. So what happened when the universe did like this? We used to know it as the Big Bang. Yeah? The time, silence, and yeah, the expression. So the expression created many, many ways to see the reality. So the self started to live in each of these new realities, galaxies, quasars, planets, which is the third dimension. And in the fourth dimension, it has the ways to escape or go outside the third dimension. Why? Because from the third dimension, you can live just one reality in positive and negative. And at the fourth dimension, you can see why you create this path. So you have many levels of time and space where you could see why you created this. So we have three ways to go to the fourth dimension. By the spiritual way, by the soul way, or the body way. Yeah? Spirit, soul, and body. So uh, if we go through the spirit, what we do is that we can see the reality and we can understand the reality and the fourth dimension. We used to call this point the higher self. It's not other one, it's not some guide or some master. It's just myself looking into the whole picture. So that's why when you connect with the higher self, you could see the things more clear. Because this is the light, so you can enlighten everything to see the whole picture. You can go through the soul, which is feeling the fourth dimension. You have the sensations, the feelings, you can hear, listen, people live in the fourth dimension. The first step for the schizophrenia. Um, that's the first stage. <laughs> and then we have the other, the body. We call that death. It's the easy part, this way. <laughs> too much pain, too difficult, too hard, so we die. Die is easier, yeah? So it's for lazy people. <laughs> but um, we created death as a way to go here because these paths are so hard to take that death is the only thing that helps us to change all the reality once and again. Even if we are not able to. Yeah, so um, we don't have to fear death because it's just a way to release. Yeah, it's just one path. If you go through this path, you could usually live hundreds of years, thousands of years. And we used to do that on the first planets and realities we created. But it was so boring. Imagine living just one life, thousand years being the same person. I bet you want to die. <laughs> um, so that's why the light created the structure, the, the most compressed reality. And there was a part of our consciousness that said, if we go deep into the dark, it would be easier to, ex to experience more things than if we are in light. It's just for something really um, easy to see, which is uh, the only way you can jump is by doing this. Yeah, so that's how you take the strength to go up, only going down. So if you want to change realities, you have to go down and then jump. Yeah, so we call that the waves of frequency, which is... Um, if this is connected like this... The frequency, where is the frequency? Here. Yeah? You see the pattern? Waves. Waves? Yeah? So you have negative and positive. It's the only way that everything moves in the universe. Like that. Like that. This start to move like this, like rolling. Yeah, rotating. So at the moment it rotates. These waves that we used to see like this, when you go straight to the point of the line, we are going to see this. Yeah? Negative, positive, negative, positive. That's the only way how the light moves through the universe. So. The soul, the, the spirit, moves like this, in a higher consciousness and lower consciousness. Yeah. The soul moves in positive emotions and negative emotions. And the body is the feminine and the masculine. That's why this is the shape of the DNA. Yeah, the DNA is the body or material shape of how light moves through the universe. So, we came up from here, we went to the two points, then we create the third and then the fourth. But the universe is not like this, it's not flat. It expresses in every direction. That's why, after the fourth dimension, where do we go? We already have the basement, which is the fourth. So, if we are here, the fourth, we have something here. We can see the whole process, yeah, which is this shape here. So, when you see the whole process, this became one eye. The eye that sees everything, once and again, once and again. That's why God is, God's symbol is an eye, one eye. The eye that sees everything. Then we go more on this. So we have the fourth dimension and the zero point. This is the zero point, the middle, that became the one. And then we have the second dimension, the third dimension, the fourth dimension. Where's the fifth? The fifth dimension is the one that allows you to see the whole process from above. 
the pyramid. Yeah, the fifth dimension is the one that allows you to see with clarity all the process you have created. But you won't go to the fifth dimension until you realize about the fourth. Otherwise, you are not a complete being. That's why don't run to the fifth dimension. Yeah, because if you go there and you don't have one, um, no, just one of this leg, leg. leg, just one of this leg. So the whole structure we created will fall. So for example, if I, as a being, decided, for example, I want to see the most deep part of me. So I see the most deep part of me, and that's my purpose, to see the most deep part of me. So I look into it, and it's the light, so it's beautiful. So maybe in this life, I create that symbol as another person. So um, I create that person, and I start to move by gravity around him or her. So when I start to move to him or her, I start to know that I'm in love of him or her. And when I got to him or her, I married, for example, and the dark starts. <laughs> so what is the dark doing? Pulling me back, yeah, to say, no, this is not me, yeah, I have to be in my center. So the most important thing is to go here, but most of the people get divorced, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we go to the opposite side, and this is like a pendulum, vroom, 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 and as most deepest emotion, harder it goes, yeah, so I was here in love, and then, no, I don't want him anymore. But suddenly, it appears again, and I said, no, I don't want to see him. But suddenly, I turned the street, and there he is again, yeah? So this became the experience of life, and start to be in the infinite. So what happened here? If I don't realize that this is my own creation, I will die, and at the next life, I will see this, and this again, and this again, and this again. It's a beautiful flower, but it's horrible. It's that I have not learned yet. And because the universe says, but I want to learn, so till you don't learn, you won't finish this. And sometimes this is a partner, this is a son, this is husband, this is whatever. The thing is, the good part of it is when I am still looking to the positive in many lives until I start to look in the negative. When I go to the negative part, I became the other. So I could see from the perspective of my opposite. Living the same but in a different way. So that's why the third dimension is a place where you experience all the realities that we created here as a purpose. The fourth dimension is when I realized that I created this and I said, okay, I understood. And then I look into myself and I said, oh, I did my purpose. We usually believe that our purpose are very important things like, I don't know, change the world or whatever. But sometimes it's just tiny things in our home. And because everything is a fractal, what you do at home, you help the whole world. So we have to remember, we are only one being experiencing many different ways of being. So if there is something that the universe don't want, is that we all do the same stuff. That's why we are all different. We are meant to be like that. And we don't have to do the things that we believe we should do because others are doing this too. We have to play our own role in this flower. And by doing this, you help everyone so they don't have to live your same reality. That's why there are martyrs in the history. People that used to suffer so others don't have to suffer. And suffering is going very deep. Yeah, while everyone is here, some people go down here, and we call that hell. Yeah, but hell is not something outside heaven either. Both of them are a projection of our higher being and the lower being. That's why at the moment we die, we go through this to go here. So that's why um, we fear death, because all the dark is around. Yeah? But I will get here according to the frequency I have here. Because if here I have a low frequency in my life, like all the time like this, the low frequency makes me slow. In the universe, we call the low frequency the past, the middle frequency present, and the higher frequency the future. So according to which frequency I'm living in this life, it will be the next one. So if my frequency is heavy and you know, like dense, I will live here a dense reality. But if it's higher, I will go like boom, very quick. So that's why um, I recommend you to die laughing. If you, are, if you know that you are going to die, for example, just try to read some jokes and laugh a lot. Yeah? Because after that, the trip goes <laughs> beyond. So when I arrive here, to this point, I see the whole process from beyond. Transcendence is when I realize about everything, I see everything like a movie, and I say, okay, now I understand what it means. So I'm ready to go to the fifth dimension, which is look into the whole process and create a new one. So fifth dimension is the positive here. So what's the negative? The sixth dimension. Sixth dimension is the creation of the shapes, the geometry. The geometry, this is the seed of every shape in the world, every shape in the reality. It's the octahedron. Yeah, the eight faces, which is the infinite, eight, eight. So the sixth dimension is the place where everything is created. The most famous picture of this is this, here. 
Yeah? The star of David? It's the two pyramids going together and created, creating a vacuum. So this point here is where all the shapes that we are thinking became real. It's the dimension where we became creators of our own reality. The fifth dimension is, is the dimension where we could see the whole reality and understand the creation. We used to call this the masculine and this the feminine, and both create the being. Usually, uh, uh, in a physical way of seeing this, biologically, we have the masculine here and the feminine like this. That's why biologically, we have here the uterus, yeah, and here, of course, this. The pyramid is um, a penis, penis, yeah, and testicles, and this is the ovaries and the womb, yeah. So both together create a new being, which is the seventh dimension. Seventh dimension is the enlightenment. Yeah, the enlightenment is when I could put both attributes, feminine, masculine, positive and negative, and create just one from that. And when I get enlightened, I start to express myself in a different direction, a different dimension, that we call the Taurus. This is the eighth dimension. The eighth dimension is when you could see, feel, be, every time and space, every reality that we have created. This is a very complicated dimension to go, because we don't even know how to handle with just one emotion here. Imagine not only every emotion of every human, but also every galaxy, every planet, every being on them. So that's, I don't recommend you to go now. That's another schizophrenia feeling. And when you put that all together, you go to the core again, which is the ninth dimension. The ninth dimension is the divine. When you return to the middle point and say, I am all this. So you start to recognize that everything that you have lived and every people you met in every reality they were only you. And the divine is like a kid, a very funny kid, that used to say when they arrived to the ninth dimension, those beings used to say, uh, again, let's do it again. So that's why we're here. <laughs> once and again, once and again, because someone is getting fun. <laughs> and it's ourselves. So this is like a movie or a game. If you don't have bad things, you will never learn new things. So that's why, that's why the sixth dimension used to create new shapes. So they could um, confound, con Confuse us. Because at the moment, we, we seem to have the very point. There's something that says, hmm, that's not the way. Yeah? And what is that? Is this shape, the sixth dimension, which is the uterus. What that symbol to for us in our religions? <laughs> yeah, you know that? <laughs> huh? The devil? Yeah. The devil is the cow. It's every animal that has horns, yeah. that gives milk, that feed the new ones. It's not the bad, it's the one that feeds the reality. But also it's the reality that, conf that confuses us. Because it's the, it's the reality based on the um, survivor. Eat, take care, be afraid of some, I don't know, some things that could happen, so stay at home. The protection of the mother. So we start to create culturally that the mother and the cow, which was the first mother, are bad things. That's, one, that's why someday there was a man that said, if we have a trinity with men, woman and child, let's take the woman and put the Holy Spirit. So, um, if you see, it's not doing about a joke, but usually it happens. When a man knows what to do, there's a, man, a woman saying, mm, I wouldn't do like that. Usually they are right. Because they have all the perspective of the creation. And men only have one, reproduce and transcendence. So they think just in sex and to be remembered by that. <laughs> um, that's biological. <laughs> and the woman just tried to make the perfect environment so everything could happen. That's why we used to think one thing and they think in many. But separated doesn't work. The first thing is try to put them all together, what we call the being, and then we will realize that we only get in couples for a biological thing, but not spiritual thing. Because when we start the spiritual path, we realize that the feminine and masculine are within. So, um, so this is what we call the Merkaba, the structure of the movement of the universe, the main geometry. So we have uh, three things here. One is the most important, which is the frequency. Here, the energy, and here, the shape, or matter. If you see, this three is the, the, um, the trinity of the reality. Every matter is made up with energy and made up with frequency. So if we are in a material way of living, uh, we have to know that we are conditioned, we have many conditionings from the energy and the frequency. So the only way you can change your reality is by changing your energy and changing your frequency. So um, this, these uh, three things that we call the father, the mother, and the son, or the kid, um, is the trinity that we all have within, and that in order to evolve, we have to put them all together to 
go farther in the evolution way. So, for example, today, in this uh, present that we have here, um, we are living now in a reality that is changing constantly. We used to believe this is a very important moment for humanity, but if you go in the past, every moment was important for humanity. They thought that they were the important ones. And that's because uh, we used to believe that we are the center of everything. And we are, but not in that way. We have a code within that says, you have to find yourself, you are the one. So everyone that, he that hears that used to say, so I'm important or my culture is important, or my religion is important, or whatever, it's me, it's important. But because we are divided and separate from each other, from this perspective of the universe, we believe that the other one is not the center. So that's one of the things that um, we are working on, on and every life and every reality, we have to deal with it, which is the ego. Ego is like um, um, something very weird, because we all need the ego, but not much. Yeah, so uh, why we need ego? Because in Latin, ego means I am. So for example, in Christianity, we used to say, we are nothing, just Jesus is. Because when he was teaching, he used to say, I am the light, I am the path, I am, but it wasn't he, it was the I am. So this misunderstood concept uh, brought us all to believe that being ourselves is bad. But if we have a sphere, and this is the center, the core of everything, I am here. I'm just a small spot dot in the sphere. I am just a projection from the core of the universe. So. What is the best way to go to the core? There are two ways. One is longer, and the other one is short. What do you think? <laughs> in a sphere. If I decide to be myself, to be I am, so there is only one way I can go, like here. Yeah, so this way. Just one line, here, I am. I don't care what happened around, just me. Yeah, but not just me and I don't care about, about anything. Yeah. Is I am, so being myself, I help everyone. Okay. And there's another way, which is also good, but it's the way in which I say, I would like to be like him first. And then another one, and go from one religion to other, to one culture to other, which is like this. Yeah, so it's a spiral. So we all usually go that way, because it's fun. Uh, the other way is just for those that said, okay, if I don't go straight from myself, I won't help anyone. But they are usually the people that did all this path, and they know how to come back. So they just go straight. So if everyone in the planet starts to take care of themselves, but not from the ego, but from the ego sum, which is I am. So everyone would reach the core. Yeah? So we have the whole network working. When we have this, usually we have this problem, let's draw it like this, <laughs> that when we have a lot of people here trying to live their lives and trying to understand who they are, and they say, I am, Whatever. But this one just realized what really means I am. So when he realized it, he got enlightened. We used to call it an enlightened master or something like that. And we used to see him with all this light above. So we used to say, if we follow him, so we are going back to the light. Yes. Everyone, instead of being centered on themselves, they start to do it like this. What shape is that? A pyramid. So a pyramidal, a pyramidal system means that we are not ready to connect with ourselves, so we need the purpose, the purpose of other ones yeah, to think that in that way we are going to be enlightened. We used to call this um, to be tied to someone, which in Latin it is religo. So religion is a way that is not spiritual, it's just a path to go through someone. So um, we usually think that, for example, Jesus, according to, to the Christianity, uh, Jesus is a very enlightened being, yeah, uh, opening the door for us in the heaven. But imagine a being, being tied by thousands of people saying, why, why me? Yeah. So someday he will say, leave me alone. Because we are out of our center, so we don't go to the core. We go up and we look the light through others. But remember, a being that realizes that he is, he knows that light is not the path, it's within. So that's why the most light he got, the most suffer he received. Because this is a torus. Everything goes to the center, doesn't go up. So incredible, incredibly, the only way to connect with the spirit is with your genitals. That's why usually you see enlightened men. <laughs> um, why? Because, um, you know, the hypothesis, which is the gland that controls the whole body, which is here in the center, uh, is the gland that controls especially the genital glands. Because we have to remember that the only way this goes up is by the energy generated down. That's why uh, the nine levels of consciousness that in our body we call chakras are separated trying to work each one of them on a special 
passes to help the whole being, which is the only way to go to the center is by getting unite both parts to the center. So the very below and the very above all together at the same distance to the core, which is the heart. So that's why the only way to go up is by being very root here on Earth. That's why we, we used to see the masters as humans. But the most perfect masters are the trees, mostly because they don't talk. They are just example. They don't have any theory like I have. It's just show that it works. They are centered where they are. Deep roots to take the minerals up. With the branches, take the light in, not there, and create the own um, uh, meal, yeah, their own meal. They create. They don't need anything from outside. They just create their own meal. And when they don't need, they just give it away by free. That's receive and give in the perfect way, being centered in the present. That's why sometimes when we get in the spiritual way, we forgot that spirit creates the biology to understand the spiritual way. Biology is not here below. It's the whole process expressed in shapes. So that's why when we say we have to be present in ourselves, it's not just to be present here in this moment, it's just to be realizing that all the reality that exists is just an expression of who I am.